when you look at the Airbus A340, something doesn't quite add up. Here's this long, elegant aircraft. Sleek fuselage, wide wings, a tall tail. The kind of jet that just looks ready to cross oceans. But then your eyes go to the engines, four of them. And compared to the massive turbofans we're used to seeing on modern long-haul jets, these look almost small, tiny even. And that raises the question, why? Why would Airbus, a company that prides itself on engineering brilliance, put what looked like undersized engines on a wide body meant to challenge Boeing's dominance? To answer that, we need to rewind. Back to the 1970s and 1980s, a different era of aviation. At that time, Airbus was still the newcomer. Boeing had the 747, McDonnell Douglas had the DC-10, Lockheed had the TriStar, and Airbus, they had the A300, a twin-engine widebody, great for Europe, great for regional markets, but not yet a true global challenger. Now here's the catch. Back then, regulators didn't trust twin-engine planes to fly far from land. The rules were strict. They were called ETOPS, Extended Range Twin-Engine Operational Performance Standards. In simple words, a twin jet could only fly a limited distance away from a diversion airport, just in case one engine failed. That meant crossing the Atlantic with two engines wasn't possible for most routes. Airlines preferred three or four engines for long-haul flights. More engines meant redundancy. More engines meant safety. More engines meant freedom. So Airbus came up with a plan. They would build two airplanes at the same time. One would be a twin jet, the A330, perfect for routes within ETOPS limits. The other would be a quad jet, the A340. Four engines, no ETOPS restrictions, ready to take on the world. And here's the genius move. Both planes would share the same wing. One design, two purposes. That decision saved Airbus billions in development costs. Airlines loved it too. Common parts, common training, shared maintenance. But there was a trade-off. Because the wing had to serve both the A330 and the A340, it couldn't be optimized for giant engines. Instead, Airbus went with smaller, lighter engines that would fit both designs. And that's how the A340 ended up with the CFM 56-5C, a stretched version of the same family of engines you'd find on smaller jets like the Airbus A320 or the Boeing 737. Efficient, reliable, proven. But visually, compared to giants like the GE90 or Rolls-Royce Trent, they looked modest. So why did Airbus stick with these tiny engines. Three reasons. Number one, efficiency. The CFM-56 was famous for low fuel burn and low maintenance. Airbus believed that four smaller, efficient engines would actually be cheaper to run than two huge, experimental ones. Number two, safety and freedom. With four engines, the A340 didn't need ETOPS at all. It could fly across oceans, over the Arctic, or deep into the Pacific without worrying about diversion limits. Airbus even turned this into a slogan, four engines for the long haul, and number three, commonality. The A330 and A340 were designed as siblings, same wing, same cockpit, same systems. Pilots could switch between them with minimal extra training. For airlines, that meant flexibility. For Airbus, it meant cost savings. On paper, it looked perfect. The A340 entered service in the early 1990s. Airlines loved its comfort, its quiet cabin, and its ability to connect cities across continents without restriction. For a moment, Airbus seemed to have nailed it. But history had other plans. In 1995, Boeing unveiled the 777, a game-changer. The 777 wasn't just another twin jet. It had enormous engines, the GE90, which would grow into the most powerful jet engine in the world. And regulators, impressed by new reliability standards, began expanding ETOPS rules. Suddenly, twin jets could cross oceans safely. And they could do it more efficiently, with two engines instead of four. This was the turning point. The A340, once marketed as the ultimate long-range aircraft, started to look outdated. Airlines noticed the difference in costs. Four engines meant four maintenance schedules four potential issues, four fuel-burning power plants. 
the 777, with two giants, was simply more economical. Airbus tried to fight back. They launched the A340-500 and A340-600, stretched versions, with more seats, more range, and new Rolls-Royce Trent 500 engines. These were powerful, capable, record-breaking machines. The A340-500, in fact, flew some of the longest commercial flights in the world. But the tide had already turned. The 777 was outselling it. Airlines were betting on twins. And soon, even Airbus would join that bet. With the A350, designed to take on the 777 head-to-head. -head. So, was the decision to put smaller engines on the A340 a mistake? Not at all. At least, not at the time. In the late 80s and early 90s, it made perfect sense. Airbus was hedging its bets. They couldn't predict how quickly ETOPS would evolve. They couldn't know that the twin jet revolution would come so fast, or that the 777 would dominate. The A340 served its purpose. It gave Airbus credibility in the long-haul market. It proved they could compete beyond Europe. And for over a decade, it carried millions of passengers across the globe, safely and reliably. Yes, its engines looked small. Yes, it fell behind its rival. But it was a bridge, a necessary step between the early wide-body days and the new era of ultra-efficient twin jets. And even today, when most A340s have retired, the sight of one is unforgettable. Long, elegant, with four little engines humming quietly under the wing. A reminder of a fascinating transition in aviation history. So the next time you see an A340 and wonder why Airbus gave it such small engines, remember this, they weren't small by accident. They were a choice. A choice shaped by safety rules, by business strategy, by the technology of the time. Tiny engines, yes. But they carried a giant story, 